countdown to Imo Kogi and Bayesa off cycle elections. And Duye Dewey, Timmy Prince Silva, others I Bayesa governorship position. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. Five days to the off-cycle elections in Baeza, Imo, and Kogi states. And they have been fierce that apathy and violence may mar the exercise in parts of the three states. However, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, has said there is no cause for fear. Speaking during the visits to three states where he held meetings with heads of security agencies, General Musa told stakeholders that troops will remain apolitical to ensure free, fair, credible and inclusive elections that Nigerians will be proud of. He said, I quote, Nigerians should have trust and belief in the security agencies by turning out to vote on election day. Do not be scared. Security forces will be on the ground and we will ensure your safety. Come out and vote. It will be a free, fair and inclusive process, unquote. Also, the civil society organizations, CSOs in Nigeria, have put certain mechanisms in place to detect and expose electoral fraud, relying heavily on the commitment they extracted from the Independent Electoral Commission, INEC, on uploading election results on the result viewing portal, IREV, the CSOs have mapped plans, mapped out plans, including advising Nigerians on how to gain access to the result portal, to cross-check properly whether the elections are transparent or not. This is the first time that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, will be conducting three off-cycle governorship elections simultaneously across different geopolitical zones. Joining me to discuss this is Uzo Unwune, Chairman, Africa Ambassadors Interactive Forum, Chairman, Ingo, UK. My friend, good to have you. Good to have you, you live. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. So, uh, from, from your reading of events uh, from uh, near diaspora, I must call the UK now, because those of you in the UK even get to be abreast of the news that most of us who, who live in Nigeria. From your reading, what is your take of, uh, on this um, um, about to be held of cycle elections? Well, it's, it's interesting that uh, they've come to the point now that these uh, staggered elections have come to stay and hold in Nigeria without the whole uh, general elections all being in one full swap. Um, this time around, all we are hoping and wishing is that um, they should be able to get it uh, right. And all the players and the participants should play by the rules. As long as uh, they observe the rules of the game, uh, we are all expecting a good outcome. And the government on this side should create a level playing field for all the parties so that uh, whatever outcome that the, ele the election turns out to be will be acceptable and credible to all. But be it as it may, it's a learning curve. And this learning curve that Nigeria has been going through all these years, and we keep seeing incidents of violence, these are the aspects that we must stamp out. It is important that the electoral awareness, voter education, and the security services are meant to remain professional and not get into the field. They should make sure that elections are held and all the materials and everything that is needed are provided and there should be timely delivery of all the things that are needed to make it a good, credible election. That is what we wish and uh, from the diaspora here, we have been advocating that elections are not do or die affair. We must get out of it. And above all, we will work 
was encouraging that the benefits and the trappings of office that induces this much of violence and people, you know, hell bent on capturing office by the all means uh, should be de emphasized. We need to begin to unbundle these offices and the perks around it. So, for now, this is uh, my take, and uh, we're hoping and wishing that I, I, I uh, think, the election should go well. I, I think the original question I should have, I should have asked you, uh, which is not too late uh, to ask, actually, would be in the backdrop of the of the uh, reputation that INEC came out with uh, with the last general elections. What is your perception of INEC at this juncture? At this point, what is your perception of INEC? The electoral body has a lot of work to do because they have been found wanting in the past elections. And even the things that are happening in the courts, because I don't see why they should conduct an election and there's so much dispute and the you know avalanche of court cases, you know, kind of really, really indicts them. It's it's not too good for them. So they have a whole lot to do to redeem redeem themselves using these off cycle elections so that we can see whether all the investment has been done towards getting elections right and being managed and delivered is able to be tested this time around so that there should be no excuses for whatever that, that may have occurred in the past. Let's use this now to see whether they have really, really woken up to their task. You, you, don't, you don't perhaps think that um, w many, of our, many of our elections are decided by the courts because our, our, our politicos members of our political class are seemingly a litigious uh, clan of people. Uh, and why am I saying that? I know for sure, as somebody who had once contested elections in the UK, and I know that even when election results are disputed, people seldom go to court. Uh, in the last 150 years, there had only been one single post ballot litigation in the UK. If that, if my memory serves me right, in the last 150 That's years. That's correct. That's so, correct. So, how come... I'm an election observer. I, 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 know you are, I know you are into a, a, a election observation, you know, not only in the UK, but in, in some European countries. How come that our own polit politicians always tend to want to go to court? Well, it is the nature of uh, the environment which they are operating. Like I was talking about the heavily induced, um, I mean, the, the perks of office that is main attraction to, for people to go into seeking public office rather than service. That is, uh, that is actually what is at the heart of it all. Uh, you were talking about <clears throat> the electoral disputes. It's a rare thing. It, it rarely happens here. I have always observed the elections for the UK Election Commission here. And we also serve as adjudicators because wherever there's issues of disagreement, all parties are called and we there and then resolve it. And everybody is always happy for it. I was it to see how the processes work. In fact, on an election day, they saw a member of parliament coming to, uh, who happens to be a minister coming to catch his vote. He didn't come with no security. He came just like himself and we introduced who, myself and the team that came from Nigeria to observe relations. And they were surprised. So that tells you that, look, it's about service to the, the community. It's about service to your society, to the country. It's not about service to self. So once you remove these excessive pets and privileges and trappings of office, you will see that what will now emerge is people who are just interested in genuinely coming to serve, not people seeing a public office as a springboard to amassing wealth. So that, that answers it in a, in a nutshell. So because you don't have this, people don't have any other job other than hoping to get into politics to loot from the public treasury. So that is the main attraction. And they will, without, they, will go, they will go to any length, they will go to the churches, they go to mosques, they go to the marabout, they go to native doctors, anything.
just to capture the office. And how, you know, being very pragmatic at this at this point, uh, how can, what are the suggestions and ideas you have on uh, denuding political offices of the pecs that, uh, that have seemingly made, you know, making the offices a do or die, a do, what are the suggestions you may want to provide at this, at this point? It's simple. If you remove, I mean, it's a job like any other job. If you go by the rules of engagement to, to, to do your job, just like you're doing your job now, without all the pecs, you know, excessive things that would padded into the job, and, you know, also the issue of lack of checks and balance, where anybody can go and, you know, dip their hand in the, in the till, take what they like, and <clears throat> nothing happens. There has not been any consequence for any, any bad behavior. For even outright fraud. Hmm? So, as long as those consequences are not there and people are not afraid of that, uh, I mean, they will go, come on, that this is just there, let me go there. You've seen the stories of people who were not doing anything. In a couple of years, they become billionaires, only in Nigeria. There's no other place where you have that happening. I'm, I mean, I've been following the trends recently of what, why should that be? It's, it's, it's down to, so, I mean, the answers are, the, so the jury is out on all this, uh, Paula. And it's surprising that in this day and age, we are continuing the same bad behavior, the same mismanagement, and nothing happens, and everybody thinks it's all right. So there's no amount of anything that may, can profit. Majority, majority of Nigerians actually know that it's not all right. Uh, it's just that I, I see more a culture of impotence. People almost, you know, left and for God. You know, the kind of left and for God mentality that is, is like the political class has, uh, you know, suddenly become uh, the uppermost caste, you know, the uppermost caste in Nigeria. Uh, I, I thought you are in winter. How come uh, you are pers perspiring? <laughs> The, is the it that? is on here. That's why you see me wearing livestock. Hey, uh, so, uh, sorry, <laughs> ma sorry, mate. I never knew. So I'm, I'm, I'm subjecting. To reduce the heating. Uh, uh, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, I've got to ask them to reduce the heating because you can see I'm very wearing a very light loading. Uh, that's that's good. <laughs> At least it, it will reduce your energy cost. Uh, uh, but okay, uh, chief. Let's move now from. Uh, let's move to something more uh, practical. Yeah. Uh, I know you are familiar with Imo in some respect. I know you are familiar with Bayelsa. I don't quite know. I decided, indeed, I decided to, to invite you to guest on the show because I know you have a working understanding of Bayelsa and Imo states, uh, the political terrains in those states. Uh, you know, the days we used to flock together in England. Now, and... In, in a way, you know, it used to be when the elections would hold in Bayelsa, those of us in the diaspora would be a bit anxiety prone because of violence. But now, it, 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 unfortunately, it's like Emo may seem to have overtaken uh, Bayelsa now in, in that anxiety you know, predisposition to be afraid that things may go gaga. What's your take of the security situation around these elections, inclusive it, it, of COVID? It's been tense. The tension around these elections, to be quite honest, is worrisome. And it shouldn't be. And uh, this idea that people believe that once they have an office, it's automatic that they must return makes it equally more difficult. It's only once, if I recall, when uh, somebody did one tenure in Nemo, and that was Ohakim. And since then, it's been any person that comes, it's automatic. Uh, you have eight years, and, uh, you know, performance is not... Uh, really the benchmark. It's a question of uh, whoever can grab it by force. It's unfortunate. And it's left for Imo people if they could be given the opportunity to choose. 
they should be able to make a decision on who should uh, run the affairs of Imo State. But so far, the atmosphere of tension that is thick in the air is undesirable. I think Imo people need to have the opportunity to have a say on who governs them for the next four years. You kept using uh, pastors, so you don't, don't you believe that this election is going to be free and fair? Because you kept using used to, and I know you speak good English. So, you, is there any right. meaning? What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that let the electoral empire use this opportunity to reassert themselves that they can deliver. I'm just being uh, uh, cautious in my optimism because we want to see that what played out in the last elections of violence, uh, ballot box matching, toggery, and all those. Despite all the investment that has been made towards getting elections right, so this time around, I am only hoping that INEX should rise up to the occasions, and regardless of what pronouncements that are being made, important that the people should also assert themselves to defend their votes. If the uh, security services has always been compromising themselves or taking sides because we saw them, there's a uh, uh, avalanche of evidence that were all over because these days it's digital era. But let us see that the people should stand up and defend their votes if they vote. That's all. And let their vote count. Uh, do you really, uh, looking at it now from your, from your cultured eyes, you know, and when I mean culture that is, you know, as an election observer, uh, I know you, you seem to have observed one or two elections in the past in Nigeria before. I, I'm not sure, but I know you do in the UK. Would you, by chance, believe that uh, people will turn out to come and cast their votes in the atmosphere that may have been unfortunately created either by misinformation or the uh, perception of violence, do you think people will come out and vote? Well, um, the last election showed that people want to really vote. Because I remember images of people, despite challenges, still came out to vote. And I see it also happening this time around. Because people really want to see in who governs them. The awareness is on the increase. Despite the intimidations, I think the voters are ready to vote. I, I, really, I really would love that people go out and really demonstrate their conviction by casting their votes for whosoever they like, because that will really enrich our democracy. It's unfortunate that the last election had a turnout percentile that was less than 35%. Wouldn't that be disturbing in any liberal democracy for somebody of like you? It could be. Of course. That is why I, I am saying that based on people's conviction that they need to have a say and also want to, I mean, uh, demonstrate their uh, civil rights in casting their votes for whoever is their preferred candidate, that they need to go and vote if they want to. Oh, okay, let me, them. let me throw the ball now to somebody like you and I. I, I think it's about time to we took responsibility. Um, what can we, people like us, who, who are political, who are, who are not politicians, non-partisan, what can we do to help encourage our people to come out and vote? You are already doing that, Bola. You are a journalist of repute, and you've been doing advocacy. So on your own side and the media, it is to continue to enlighten people, to create the awareness, so that the message will keep going down there that people need to do their own part. So already, I mean, on the side of the media where you belong, on the side of civil society where I belong, we're carrying on with a lot of advocacy, in terms of voter education, in terms of uh, creating the necessary uh, uh, awareness that uh, the, the average uh, voter needs to know so that they can be able to, I mean, get up to their responsibilities 
and then uh, make sure that uh, the right people get into the right places for betterment of the society and for also for improved service delivery. As somebody who gets called upon by UK politicians to come and give pep talk, can I implore you at this juncture? Can I enjoin you to look straight into your camera and talk to that average Nigerian politician who is going to be, uh, who is going to be, um, you know, running for election in any of in any of the three states? What you would expect of them? You never know. Uh, after all. After all, like somebody often joked with me, uh, Jesus never left an army, he left the world. Uh, <laughs> Prophet Muhammad wasalam, uh, never left an army, he left the world. Uh, we never know when the world will ultimately uh, you know, break, break the iron. So, you have any word of yeah. encouragement to. Yes. Go ahead, please. What I will tell, what, what tell viewers and people in these areas where the elections are going to hold in this off cycle election a cycle is that they should come out and vote and for the politicians they should go by the rules of the game it's not about do or die you mustn't win election and there's no person's blood that is worth the office you're seeking because people got to be alive people have to be alive before you can be able to serve them so by killing and many people just to get into office, the question you ask yourself is that, is it worth all that trouble? So if the answer is on the contrary, then the person has to, I mean, uh, review their strategies and make sure that uh, you're, you're convinced that you're going to, to do, into any public office to serve and not to go and loot. I, I really then, want to... Go ahead, go ahead. Finish, finish well, finish well. Hello? Okay. I, I really want to say thank you, Chief. If you're still uh, hearing my voice, I really want to appreciate you. Uh, the masters of the game, my controllers in the back room have actually asked thank for you. a break. And about time, uh, about time, I, I allowed them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go thank first. You. Thank we'll you go for first. having me. Thank Bye -bye. Bye -bye. We'll Bye -bye. go for a short break. And when we're back, we'll take on the sophomore leg of the program.